You're live from DeVos Fieldhouse, Matt Wainer, alongside Paul Willard. But we do not have a Hope College basketball game. Nope, we are in the MIAA tournament tonight. Wonderful matchup. The semifinals, 5.30 matchup, Calvin University versus Trine University. Winner will play. The winner of that 7.30 matchup, Hope College, tonight will be taking on the Brits of Albion. We got a couple of fun games here, Paul. Yeah. And I'm excited to see what happens because these teams all need a win if they want to get into the NCAA tournament. I think Hope College probably the only team that's really safe that they will, will likely get into the postseason season these other three teams need to win the tournament for them to be dancing yeah I would totally agree with you I think that you know we've got a top 25 matchup tonight uh, two ranked key teams uh, number 13 in Trine versus number 22 in Albion uh, these two teams are no strangers to one another though right they've already played twice this year uh, they're matching up for a third time in the MIAA tournament uh, wouldn't it be a surprise if one of them ended up getting in in the tournament, uh, the NCAA tournament, as an at-large bid? Um, I think Trine might have a better opportunity at that just based on their record. Um, but Calvin certainly, certainly can bring uh, bring the heat when they want to. And they played a very, very tight game against Calvin, or against Trine, on Calvin's home court just a little under a month ago. So That's right. And, you know, Trine 14-2 in conference. They are co-holders of the MIAA champion uh, with Hope College, and then Calvin is 12 and 4 in conference, 20 and 5 on the season. We're going to take a break to uh, send you over to Darren Dysmars. Be right back here with more basketball. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, we ask you to please rise. Ladies and gentlemen, if so desired, Please join me in the singing of our national anthem. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rockets red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave? Ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the DeVos Field House here on the campus of Hope College for today's MIAA semifinal contest of the 2023 Women's Basketball Tournament. Tonight's featured teams are the Knights of Kelvin University and the Trine University Thunder. Here are tonight's starting lineups. First for the Knights at one forward, a 5'8 senior from Middleville, number 12, Sydney Cleary. 
And at one forward for the Thunder, a 5'9 senior from Freeland, number zero, Alyssa Argyle. At one forward for the Knights, a six foot sophomore from Vienna, Virginia, number 14, Valerie Dirksey. And at one forward for the Thunder, a 5'9 sophomore from Grand Rapids, number 11, Katie Tate. Starting at center for the Knights, a 6'3 senior from Caledonia, number 24, Gabby Timmer. And at center for the Thunder, a 5'10 senior from Monroe, Ohio, number 10, Katie Sloniker. At one guard for the Knights, a 5'8 senior from Frisco, Texas, number 20, Leah Harris. And at one guard for the Thunder, a 5'5 senior from Lake City, number 3, Michaela Artis. And at the final guard spot for the Knights, a 5'6 senior from Highlands Ranch, Colorado, number 23, Sarah Neely. And at the final guard spot for the Thunder, a 5'6 sophomore from Warsaw, Indiana, number 15, Sydney Wagner. Kelvin University is coached by Mark Christner. Trine University is coached by Andy Rang. Your officials this evening, Brad Dice de Mars, Charles Smith, and Stacy Thomas. Hey, back here from the Boss Fieldhouse. Calvin University taking on the Thunder, trying. Loser goes home. Yeah. Exciting matchup tonight. Yeah, Hope College playing host to the MIAA tournament this year because they have a better uh, second half, back half of the season. Uh, kind of the flip of uh, what happened last year where Trine University ended up hosting the MIAA tournament um, down in Angola there. Um, and of course, we all know how that turned out. Um, for our uh, for our uh, flying Dutch uh, going on to win the um, MIAA tournament and then also going on to win the national championship. Of course. That's right. Trying the the co-winners of the MIAA regular season alongside Hope, both at 14 and two. Calvin 20 and five on the season, 12 and four in the MIAA. You have to tune in later and see the other semifinal matchup: Hope College taking on. The Brits from Albion. So here we are on the tip off. Calvin has possession. The top of the key here is Neely trying to get things set up as she moves over to Cleary. And their, their best player here for Calvin, Gabby Timmer. You can see she, she knows how to stuff stat sheets. She's very good. Yeah. She's been dominant MIAA player all year. Neely top of the key on the dribble drive. There's Timmer. Can't get it to go, Put rebound. A, a little long there, yeah. Gabby with a nice looking shot though as the shot clock expired. And here's Trine trying to move it the other way. Now the wings and here's the drive there. It's by Tate. Just out around the key. The Trine guards, a good drive here by Artis. Artis dishes off back to Tate. There's the corner for three. Alyssa Argyle gets the three to go, 3-0, try and lead. Yeah, Tryon try has great guard play. You know, they lost Sam Underhill early on in the season to a pretty devastating injury. Um, and so their guards have had to step up big time, including Sidney Wang, Wagner and Alyssa Argyle here. So I expect both of them to really come out in full force tonight. That's right, Paul. And, you know, the loss of Underhill really hurtful for them, but they had to find a way to, to be a team that was really top five, top ten, and now trying to find their way into the tournament here. Yeah. Yeah, Gabby Timmer, uh, again, with the drive, the shot clock winding down, getting down to the to the bare minimum, basically. So trying playing some very, very stout defense right away here. Timmer finds herself at the free throw line. Timmer, 17.8 points a game on the year, 10.2 rebounds per game, averaging a double-double. My favorite statistic, she has 63 blocks in just 26 games. That's incredible. She's also just uh, just surpassed the total rebound uh, total. Uh, she's now the all-time rebound leader at Calvin. Um, unbelievable season by her. She gets two to go, and it's three to two here. She's trying on the other end. There's Wagner, she gets it out. It's Artis, can't get it, rebound brought down by none other than Timmer. Here's Cleary. Keep going, Dad. All around the perimeter of Calvin, they get it down to Timmer. Timmer's doubled, 
And they get it out. Nice look for three. Oh, wow. The toilet bowl roll yeah. by Cleary goes down. That shooter's little touch there by Cleary. Uh, you know, Cleary coming in, I think, averaging close to 11 or 12 points a game as well. So uh, Calvin has a lot of young women who can contribute. Uh, and so does Trine. You can see early that you know, they're going to try and double Tim her down, especially not let her get that shot she wants on the block. And that's a good look on the other end, just not soft enough by Wagner. Rebound brought down by Calvin. Here's Cleary going the other way. Dishes off to Harris. Leah Harris thinks about it. She gets puts the ball in the floor, trying to drive, get her way to the bucket. Trying with the stout defense again down the uh, down the court here as the shot clock continues to wind down for Calvin. Six seconds left on the shot clock now. What do you think of Trine's defense so far? I mean, it's been great, and you know, you'd like to expect. I mean, the ill-advised entry press there. Lux out for Calvin. They just got a few seconds left here. The shot clock. We'll see what they're gonna come up with, but been pretty good so far. That's going to result in a shot clock violation. Um, despite Calvin's coach uh, best efforts here to let them know how exactly quickly it was winding down. Wagner bringing up the ball now for the Thunder. Wagner 14.7 points game. Also yeah. all MIAA honors. Wonderful season for her. Very easy bucket by Michaela Artis. She was quick on the dribble there, five to five now. Yeah, Artis averaging uh, close to 12 points a game as well for trying. Uh, of course, you know, Sam Underhill's um, injury going out. She was contributing close to 11 points a game as well. Um, you know, having a post player that I believe Sam Underhill was 6'1", maybe 6'2". Uh, you know, trying faithful, don't don't come after us for, for getting that wrong. But, uh, you know, it, it, it hurts when you lose somebody like that. But thankfully, the guard play for trying has really stepped up. That's a three-point try there. Out in the corner by Neely. Trying easily gets the rebound. They're back the other way. Wagner thinks about it, but she dishes off to Tate. Tate on the drive, gets some space, dish out. There's Artis. She likes it. Gets it to go. Uh, no reason why she can't. She's got two of them tonight. That's they right. will rely on her. Artist, great shooter. Yeah, relying on her and Sydney Wagner as well. You know, I was looking at some of their stat sheets before this, and uh, it's kind of remarkable how how either it's one of their guards that's scoring a lot of points, and then small contributions from the rest of the team for trying. Absolutely, and here's Cleary on the drive. Cleary down, gets it to Dirks. He can't get the position she wants, gets it to Timmer. Oh, just not enough. Rebound brought down by Artis. She wants to push it. She wants that one-on-one. -on -one. Good move, up and under, just off the front. Wonderful yes. defensive effort by Tate. It will be Calvin basketball. I think Gabby Timmer with uh, two or three rebounds thus far uh, today. Her grand total before this game was 1,143 rebounds for her career. Uh, Calvin, all-time leader in rebounds. Now she's at uh, 1,145, I believe, if my count is correct. She's had an unbelievable season, like we said, and I think you know she's not trying to finish tonight. She wants to continue to see Absolutely. where this can go Absolutely. and play in an MIAA championship game tomorrow night, 7.30. So we'll see what happens here. I think it's going to be a tight one. Here's Cleary. Yeah, she gets the one she likes, but it's an air ball. But wonderful effort on the offensive end by Rohr. Ball scrounging around on the ground, seeing who can come up with it. Referees are going to get a jump ball. As we see, Rohrer, the freshman from Ludington, checks in the game for Calvin. And here we got another substitution for Calvin. Coming in for Sarah Neely is number 13, Alyssa Carner, the sophomore from Holland, West Ottawa. Local product. Always like to see that. We'd love to see them on our court here, of course, you know, but uh, yeah. you maybe know, it feels every, not everybody can stay home. So. That's right. <laughs> Here's Trine coming the other way. The drive here by Argyle. You see a lot of dribble drive action here early yeah. by Trine. I think they want to get it out in some shooters' hands. They trust themselves to drive, get underneath the basket. Good positioning up and over is Sydney Wagger. She loves that shot. She'll hit it. 
Yeah, Sydney Wagner with the, just a really nice mid-range jump shot. Of course, she can hit it from downtown too, um, but trying, you know, just keeping up the, the uh, what I would call a manic amount of defense right now. Just they are hounding the Calvin, uh, Calvin Knights. So. So they're going to take quick timeout. Yep. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back here. 30 seconds. On, uh, on Calvin's offensive end here, Calvin has uh, come up against the shot clock winding down on more than one occasion thus far, three or four occasions, I think, now. And I think Trine's defense is just suffocating the Knights, unfortunately, and they're not able to just get any shots off. You can see they're really trying to double Timmer, make that hard for them on the other end of the court. And here's Trine now. So they try to get it down to their forward, and that is number 34. Abby Sander goes up with it. Great block, and they're going to call Timmer for the foul. Abby Sander, a 6'2 freshman out of Warsaw, Indiana. Um, you know, I'm, I'm not I'm not a big guy, but I look out on the court there, and I see a, somebody who's 6'2, and I say, oh, yeah, she's got a future for sure down in the paint. Hey, she's from Indiana. I expect her to hit that free throw. A lot of great shooters come from Indiana. Yeah, I speak true. like an Indiana product myself. Are you a great free throw shooter? <laughs> <laughs> I guess I'll have to find out after the game. Okay. Here's Cleary right. going the other way with it. Out to Harris. Harris, wonderful drive there. She dishes out too hot for Timmer. And here's Wagner going the other way. She gets spacing, gets it out to Hines, and Hines out around the perimeter. Looks like they're going to get Cleary for the reach. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I think one of the things that I'm seeing here as well um, is that, you know, Calvin is being taken off of their game momentum-wise. They just can't. They just can't get anything organized on the offensive end. And one of the things that I'm seeing is that Trine is super organized on the offensive end, uh, which is causing even more disruptions for Calvin's defense. That's right, you know, Trine being a team that's very disciplined. They know their identity. They know how they're gonna score. They have a lot of players that do a lot of things similarly. Not so much just coming from one player. It looks like she steps out of bounds. Yeah. Turnover will be on. Tate going to go the other way here. Opportunity for Calvin to get back in this ball game. Here's Cleary. Dribbling up. It's Harris on the wing. It's a lot of ball action just around the perimeter as they move the ball around. Ooh, good move in the post there. Yeah. She gets the two to go. That's Roar, the freshman. Wonderful up and under move with the left. 11 to seven now. You yeah, can nice feel the little. energy here. It feels like an MIAA tournament game for it, sure. It totally does, especially with the faithful of, uh, of Trine and Calvin kind of right behind us here. Artist, too quick. Once again, give her another two. Around the perimeter out to Harris. They're trying to get that entry pass to Roarer as Timmer's got some time on the bench here. Around the perimeter, like you said, that suffocating trying defense, they're fronting the bigs of Calvin, not allowing that entry pass at all. Cleary trying to decide, she drives, dish out to Roar. Roar gets the ball down, can't handle the heat. Dirksy down low. Here's trying in transition. Artist controlling the tempo of this ball game. But down to that freshman, that's Sander. Michaela Artis dribbled it off of her foot there just now. Um, you know, one of the things that I mentioned early on is, is Trine's guard play. And I think that, as I was talking about earlier, one of the most remarkable things that I saw in their stat sheet is that they have one guard that scores in double digits. Mm -hmm. And then hardly anybody else scoring in double digits. So it's either one guard scores and nobody else does or, uh, you know, or something else happens, but very rarely do they have multiple players in double figures here. The balance scoring attack. Oh, in and out. It's a good look there by Carner, the West Ottawa product, in and out, like you said, and here's Artis going the other way. Sander around the perimeter. She wants pick and roll. Ah, ah. miscommunication on that end. Yep, yep. She wanted that pick and roll, or she she thought Sander could slip down for that easy two, but 
I've had many moments like that on the soccer field uh, where I'm expecting my, my fellow teammate to run through right. into open space and I pass the ball and then of course nobody's there. Absolutely. Same difference here, and, and here's clear. He's trying to get something going. Like you said, I mean, you're just not seeing much from Calvin. They're settling for shots that yeah. they don't love, and that's going to be tough for them. they got to figure that out here. That's a good look. Yeah. Nothing but nylon is Sierra Hines, the sophomore from Carmel, Indiana, University High School. As Hines gets that three to go, 16 to 7, the try and lead. Nice Calvin skip tries pass to there, answer. An ball, yeah. Good move by Hines. Gets out to Tate. Tate trying to drive. Picks up her dribble. Going to see what they can set up. Wonderful cut by Artis. Beautiful backdoor pass. And this has just been a terrific first quarter by Artis. Yeah. She is controlling the tempo of this game. Yeah, Katie Sloniker saw that all the way as well and uh, really gave a nice feed to Artis there. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm starting to wonder here. I think Artis is, might run away with the scoring here if, if, if Calvin keeps letting her get in the paint and dribble drive. She leads all scores with nine so far as we wrap up this first quarter. Under 30 seconds to play. Roar settles. And that's an air ball rebound brought down by Hines. Hines gets it across timeline. There's Artis. Cuts. Can't get the two to go. Rebound brought down by Dirksy. Calvin's going to set up for the last shot here. Yeah. Nice steal there by wow. Artis to end this first quarter. A, a frustrating finish for that quarter yeah. by Calvin, just with seven points. And they got some stuff to talk about as Coach Christner gets them together to think about what changes they can make offensively. Sure. And we'll be back here to talk about that. Let's take a quick break at the end of this first quarter. We'll be back with second quarter action live from DeVos Fieldhouse. It's no secret. The best way to learn about Hope College is to spend time on our campus. The Hope Admissions team invites you to a personalized visit experience you won't forget. Located in downtown Holland, Michigan, our historic campus is close to shopping and dining and just 10 minutes from Lake Michigan. We invite you to check out our campus tour options or sign up for an online tour with the Hope Admissions office. There's never been a better time to see Hope College. Visit us at hope.edu slash admissions. Yeah, my name is Travis Williams. I'm the CEO of the ODC Network. I graduated from Hope in 1998. I studied biology, and then I also played football. In order to be successful, people really need more than just the academic experience, but they need people to come alongside them and help them coach them, mentor them. I find that Hope College has just been one of the best examples of being able to do that anywhere. As an invested community partner, LVZ is proud to help share Hope's stories of transformational impact. From your boss field house, Matt Wainer, alongside Paul Willard. Yeah. 18 to 7 is the Trine Thunder lead. And like you were talking about in that first quarter, a lot of suffocating defense by Trine, doing anything that they want defensively. Calvin's got some adjustments to make. Yeah, and you know, Trine really loves playing in DeVos Fieldhouse. Uh, they've come in here the past couple of years and uh, and done a good job. Um, uh, competing with Hope and beating Hope uh, twice over the past two years in DeVos Fieldhouse. Of course, Hope going down to Angola and avenging those losses, but yeah, Trine loves playing here, and, Hope, and you can see it. Hope and Trine very aware of each other and, and aware of that rivalry that it's been the last few years. Two of the best teams in the country the last three seasons. Here's Trine on the other end of the court. Setting it up. There is Sloniker. Down. That's Hines trying to drive. She does. Oh. She gets fouled, but she can't get it to go. I'm sorry, that's Alyssa Argyle on the drive. She finds herself at the free throw line. Are there any uh, specific adjustments you see that you think Calvin might try to do offensively that's going to help them yeah. try to get the ball down to their bigs or try to move around? I mean, everything's just been so much around the perimeter for right. them. Right. Well, like I was just saying at the break, I, th I think one of the things that I've noticed the most is that is that Calvin doesn't seem to want to push the pace with their offense. They seem okay to just play perimeter ball, look for a little touch paint or, uh, um, you know, a touch in the paint to, the, to one of their bigs, kick it out again. Um, and so Calvin just doesn't seem to be in any sense of urgency, which sometimes is good. But also when you're playing a, uh, a team like Trine that just likes to stifle you at every turn, 
uh, you got to match that intensity. Calvin, they do get the post touch that they want to Timmer. Yep. And she's fouled. That's going to be on the floor. Coach Christian not happy about a lot of the hands and the face no. there. As she's getting doubled every time, and they, they got one on the entry pass, they got one on the backside. That's just yep. going to be hard. They're not going to let her get to her 18, and that's just what Trine decided. Nice entry pass. Yeah, good finish there by number 14 uh, for Calvin Valerie Dirksy. Yeah. Here's Trine going the other way. It's Wagner at the top of the key, setting up the offense. Gets it out to Sloniker, the senior. Nice pass down there, Aris. Yep, she gets it out to her shooter. And Tate can't get that to go. Rebound brought down by Harris. Harris across the timeline. She dribble drives, gets some spacing. Here's Timmer. Can't get the room she wants. Trying to use her pivot foot. Ill-advised yeah. pass. Yeah, that... You know, Gabby kind of got stuck down there and and stopped maybe a little too early um, and just couldn't find a, a, an outlet to, to push that ball, uh, you know, to move the offense. So, you know, I, I, I like what I see right now from Calvin in terms of their pace. Um, they just got to put the ball in the net. Trying, going the other way. Sloniker puts ball on the floor, gets to her spot down there, dishes out to Tate. Tate drives with the left, up and dishes out. Here's Artis. Artis on the drive, settles for an easy two. Yep, anytime I want to. Yeah. She's been great tonight. 11 points so far with eight to play here in the second. Commanding a lot offensively for Trine. Here's to Kuiper, setting up the offense for Calvin. Couple of subs here to come back in. Harris sets up for that two she likes, can't get it to go. Rio's brought down by Wagner, she wants to push it. Ooh, great nice steal, steal by Harris. Here's a little bit of a different pace here and Calvin's trying to push it. See if they can get that entry pass. Timmer's trying to get her positioning. Yeah. Refs are gonna find a foul and that's on Sloniker. She's asking coach, yeah. what do you want me to that's do? Right. I mean, she got, she beat her to her spot. Yep. As you see Timmer hustling up the court to get yeah. down to the block saying, I'm calling for it because she knows she can't do it in double coverage. That's right. Yeah, you know, uh, Sloniker getting a little frustrated there, but uh, it's kind of clear as day that the hands were all over Gabby Timmer's back there. And a steal by Trine now, looking to push the pace up the court. Down in the paint now, kick out for three. And it's good. Yeah. The huge bucket there by Argyle. Calvin's yeah. going to need to take a timeout to talk about it. We're going to take a quick break here. 25-9 is the Trine lead. In a Hope Forward model, every student who comes through the doors of Hope College would have their tuition 100% covered. Live here from the Boss Field House. 25 to 9 is the Trine Thunder lead. Yeah. And after that media timeout, Calvin's got some stuff to think about. We've talked a lot about pace of play, Paul. Yeah, we have. We've talked a lot about uh, stifling defensive pressure. Uh, you know, you and I were talking during the break, and I think, um, you know, Calvin's looking to get the ball into Gabby Timmer, but like you said, she's getting doubled at almost every turn. Um, and there's there's not much that they can do. We got a three second violation here. We're gonna get uh, three seconds there on Timmer. Yep. Another turnover for Calvin. 
Yeah, and you're not you're not going to put you're not going to put a dent in that scoring differential right now uh, with with some easy uh, turnovers that that Calvin just made a mental error on that. Here's Wagner out to Sander at the top of the key. Dishes off to Artis. Artis quick on the dribble out to her shooter. There's Tate. Yep. Why not? They are just too comfortable, too confident. They know exactly who they are. They know exactly what they want to do, and they've been here before. Yeah. And whenever you're in a conference like the MIAA and you've got a great team that's like Calvin, that's, you know, they're down 19 here in this ball game. This is a team that really could have done a lot of damage in, in the, in the uh, NCAA tournament. Yeah. We still have a lot of basketball game to play here. But try and showing themselves to be a team like they're ready to, to make their way and, and make a run here in the in the tournament. Yeah. Timmer. Oh, nice shot by Gabby Easy Timmer too. there. Yeah. She's not going down quietly, that's for sure. Here in her last game, potentially, she's going to make sure, give it everything she's got, try and bring Calvin back in this ballgame. Here comes trying the other way. It's Argyle out to Sander. Sander over here to Wagner. Out to Artis, yep, for the easy two, that's Sander. Yeah. And she's also gonna get Cleary on the foul. Too strong, the easy two goes there for Sander, finds herself at the free throw line. A couple of subs coming in a ball game, let's see if we can get them for you. Here's Rohrer is coming in for Calvin. Yeah, and on that play too, Gabby Timmer uh, and Leah Harris kind of collided at the top of the key, uh, which kind of uh, freed up that space um, for Sander to get down low. And just, you know, Calvin was basically down two players because both of their players were on the floor. Cleary going the other way, gets it out to Harris. Harris on the drive. Look at, ooh, that's nice up and nice under. Nice take there by Leah Harris. Just kind of the hesitation dribble. Love that, uh, Hezzy. Little, little head fake and then go, right? That's, you know, that's kind of what you want to see from Calvin, too. If they're not able to put uh, Gabby Timmer down in the paint, like, let's get, let, let them get a dribble drive in and see what they can make of it. We might see a little bit more of that at the top of the key. Opportunities to get them in a pick and roll offense here. We'll see if Timmer wants that, see if she can get her touches that way. Yeah. Here's Cleary going the other way out to Harris. Harris knows she can win that one on one. She goes right to left. It's back out to Witty. Witty on the other end to Roar. Roar trying to find. That's passed down to Cleary. Cleary out to Witty. Calvin, just nothing doing, can't find anything. Oh, but Cleary, wow. desperation shot, gets it to go. Why wow. not? Yeah, I wasn't sure if she got that off in time. Uh, you know, hard to know. You gotta, you, you kind of gotta watch the light and make sure I, that her the ball was out of her hand. But it, it uh, did, it did look late. But that ball, that basket will count. 32 to 16 is the try and lead. Roar just a little bit over the back on Sloniker. She's gonna get the foul. Tate and Artis come back in the ball game. Timmer's gonna get a break on the bench, see if she can get a breather so she can come back in for the last couple minutes until halftime. Artis passing the ball in, out to Sloniger, top of the key. Nice pick there by Sander. Ooh, Ooh in Hines out, yeah. can't get that to go. Yeah, one of the interesting things that I'm seeing with Trine here is that, uh, oh, you know, you got Alyssa, you got Alyssa Argyle and Sydney Wagner on the bench, and Michaela Artis is the is the lone top scoring guard out on the court right now. You know, I kind of wonder if Coach Rang is trying to, uh, you know, trying to go with like a one-two punch here, right? Like. You know, you've got Michaela Artis out there and she's gonna do her thing and then they're gonna throw back in Alyssa Argyle and Sydney Wagner to compliment. It's been pretty balanced other than other than uh, Artis and we'll see what they wanna do. It's been a lot of perimeter passing still, a lot of pick and roll offense and here comes Hines trying to get the one that she wants to Sloniker. Calvin doing a much better job in the second quarter stopping that drive. Here's Tate. She's fouled on her yeah. way up. Too strong, and the foul is on the sophomore, Dirksy. Yeah, one of the things that I noticed on that play as well is as, as you're looking at as you're looking at the two squads here defensively, you know, we talked about a lot about trying suffocating defense and uh, 
Trinon offense had all the time in the world out on the perimeter to do what they wanted to do with the ball. They moved the ball around, they did a little pass in, pass back out, and then a dribble drive. Um, you know, if Calvin wants to get back in this game, they're gonna have to do it at both ends of the floor and really put some, some hustle to the muscle, right? <laughs> Here we go, coming the other way. Here's Cleary, seeing what she can get going. There's that high screen and roll. And that's Dirksy. She tried to get the slip, dish down to Roar out. Yep, gotta hit that one. Oh, can't get it to go, but it was a great look by Harris. Rebound brought down by Artis. Pushing the pace, going the other way. Here's Tate. Hand off dribble, penetration, down to Sander. Yep. Nice find there by Tate. Too strong. Too strong, Abby Sander going up with it. They know their identity, they know what they want to do. Up 19 with three to play, heading to halftime. Hope College women's team looking on to see who their potential matchup oh, yeah. could be if they can take care of business tonight That's right. against their rival Albury. Nice shot there by Rohrer, really nice uh, backspin on that ball as it, as it fell right through the bottom of the net here. Here's Sander, top of the key. Dishes off, Artis gonna see what they can set up. Not in a hurry. Hines gets, that's a nice post touch there, but she's gonna get yep. happy feet by Abby Sander. A couple of subs coming in the ball game. That's Timmer, Timmer coming back in. Looks like that's Carner coming back in the ball game as well. That's number 23, the senior, Sarah Neely. Okay, they're gonna go high screen and get that. Ooh, oh. good look by Cleary, I love yeah. that touch. Can't get it down, keep shooting. There's Tate. Dishes out to Sloniker. Sloniker down to Sander. Good move, yep. The pass on the slip, and there's Sander. Wonderful defense by Timmer. She may or may not get credited with the block there. Here's Cleary going the other way. Biggs fronting everything from Calvin's Biggs. Nice look by yeah. Timmer. That's the one she wanted. See if she can get going there on Sander. Cuts the lead to 15. That's what Calvin needs. Yeah. They can keep this within 15 points at halftime. They got a shot in the second half. Yeah, you know, in that in that last game that they played at Van Nord Arena in Grand Rapids, uh, Trine came out really fast in that game as well, and Calvin just kind of inched their way back in to eventually tie the game and I think even take a one-point lead at one point in time. Uh, but then uh, Trine just kind of running away with it there for uh, a five-point victory that they walked away with. It's a good drive by Artis, but even better defense by Calvin. This is a big possession for Calvin right now. We've got a minute and seven and counting to play until yep. halftime. Good luck. Can she get it? Yes. yes. Nothing but nylon. Huge shot by Sarah Neely, and you can feel the energy change yeah. here for the Knights. Yeah, you can really start to feel it from the Calvin bench and the Calvin faithful who are sitting behind us to our left here. Uh, they're getting excited and, and walk, walk into halftime with a little bit more momentum. Nice seal by Cleary on the break here, lay up and in. Oh, and she's fouled hard. She lands kind of awkwardly yeah. on the basketball hoop. And that Sanders gonna get called for the foul. That's a good look by Cleary. She's gonna find herself at the free throw line. Calvin right now proving me every ounce of doubter as they were down 20 very early in this ball game and it yeah. felt like all but over, but yeah, a chance to bring no it sorry. 10. It's a totally different ball game now as Calvin's getting the momentum back. Sydney Cleary at the line now shooting two uh, after that hard foul that she took. That, that She almost had an and one on that play too. That almost dropped in. Good shot by Cleary. So we get a chance to look at the replay here. She's clearing on the drive. Sander just gets her right over on her right arm. Yeah. Cleary gets a second to go. Brought down to 10. That's huge for Calvin to be within 10 heading into half. Big defensive possession for them. One at a time right now if you're a Knight fan. Here's Wagner. Out to Artis. Artis on the drive. Out to Sloniker here at the top of the key. 
Argyle dishes out. Wagner thinks about it. Gets her defender in the air. Can't get it to go. Rebound by Dirksy. Calvin, one more shot. Get it into single digits with the momentum heading into halftime. Here's Neely. She drives. Oh, she's going to get travel, called yeah. for the travel there. That is not the momentum shift that you wanted to see if you're a Knight fan here. Well, but it's been wonderful possessions for the last three minutes for Calvin. Here comes Tate. One last try. Good drive. They're going to get Calvin on a hands foul there. Looks like that one's on Sarah Neely. She will be shooting a one and one. Ill-advised foul there by Calvin. Yeah, I don't know if I, I don't know if I like that. Um, up and in, yeah. It it kind of kill it kind of kills the momentum for uh, for Calvin a little bit to allow that foul to happen there. Tate gets one of two to go. They'll dribble it out to yeah. halftime. 36 to 25, those last few minutes. Wonderful possession from Calvin. Yeah, you really got to like what you see if you're a Calvin Knight fan here. Putting the pressure on, uh, really doing a great job offensively and defensively. Uh, trying, of course, coming out super fast, super strong, as we expected them to, uh, and going into the halftime with an 11 point lead. Anything you want to look forward to in the second half here? We'll continue to see what happens with second half action here live from DeVos Fieldhouse. We're going to have a good finish here here. Stay with us. Make sure you tune in for the 7.30 game. Hope College taking on the Brits from Albion for that other semifinal matchup. Hey, we'll be right back after uh, this halftime break with some second half action. Every day, the people of Hope College are leading, discovering, believing, Dreaming. Pursuing. Serving. Innovating. Exploring. Creating. Collaborating. Questioning. Curing. We are finding new ways to do old things. We are challenging the status quo. And building a legacy. We are pursuing truth. We are solving tomorrow's problems today. We are thinking globally. We are faithfully hoping we are celebrating victories. This day and every day, we are strengthened by our faith, bound by a shared commitment to building community, and dedicated to providing our students with a world-class liberal arts education. Faithful. Welcoming. Transformational. This is Hope College. Whether you're building your dream home, buying a fixer-upper, or downsizing, the process can feel overwhelming. Let the local team at Lighthouse Title help the closing process be one less worry. Just ask your real estate professional or lender to close at Lighthouse Title. To learn more about how we're involved in our 35 communities or to ask us any questions about the process, visit us online at lighthousetitle.net. future is not just a tweak to the old system, we're imagining an entirely new system. In a Hope Forward model, every student who comes through the doors of Hope College would have their tuition 100% covered.
We're at an important moment in American history. There's some big questions on the table, such as how do we indeed become a land of opportunity for all rather than a land of privilege for a few? And the answer to that question is being decided, not just in the political arena and not just through cultural conversations. The answer to that question is being decided, perhaps most importantly of all, through the admissions and financial aid processes on college campuses across the country. Because higher education has the potential to indeed make us a land of opportunity for all. Higher education can be the great equalizer. We spend a lot of time talking about income inequality. But at the end of the day, income is the outcome. What we ought to be talking about is education inequality. Higher education can be the great equalizer. Research shows this. There's an economist at Harvard named Raj Chetty, and his research shows that a student who comes from a low-income background and a student who comes from a high-income background, if they attend the same college or university, they have nearly identical opportunities for success after they graduate. But the problem, of course, is that those students don't attend the same colleges and universities. And another economist, Carolyn Hoxby at Stanford, shows that one of the main reasons that students who would be eligible to attend great universities and often would be eligible for financial aid, one of the main reasons they don't attend is the price, the sticker price. The sticker price scares people off. And what we're seeing now, because there's new data out, uh, new data shows that many high schoolers are eliminating colleges from consideration because of the price, because of the posted price. In fact, data out this year shows that 73% of high schoolers eliminated college from consideration because of the posted price. And that number, 73%, is up from 68% last year and up from 56% two years ago. Access to higher education is a problem. But what we see at Hope College is that there's another problem, which is a life access to a life of impact after students graduate. Because the students who do find their way into higher education oftentimes, too oftentimes, are burdened by debt. And that debt skews the kind of things that students are doing after they graduate. Too often students, because they have so much debt, are chasing income rather than pursuing a life of impact. And they're chasing income because they have to pay off their debt. Hope Forward is a vision that we have at Hope College that will eliminate these problems of access. Hope Forward gives all students at Hope College access to a great education that's fully funded up front. And then it gives them access to a life of impact after they graduate because they're not burdened by debt. It asks students to pay for their education through gifts after they graduate rather than a large tuition bill up front. And for us at Hope College, this will move the mission of Hope forward to new heights. But we also think this might be a new national model for higher education. We think this vision might be a model that could work at other places to help indeed make this country a land of opportunity for all. There are over 5,000 colleges and universities in the United States alone, and nearly every single one of them is named after a location or a historical figure. But along the shores of Lake Michigan, there is a school whose namesake is not a founder, not a historical figure, not a state, city, or physical landmark. It is named after an ideal, a virtue, a way of life. Its name is hope. It is so easy to get lost in what this world lacks, to become discouraged by its needs, gaps, and flaws. Can we see beyond the uncertainty and brokenness? At Hope College, we do. Not by ignoring the world as it is, but by learning and living with the belief that this is not the world as it should be. By driving to understand, to unlock clarity, to amplify truth. By leading with inspired compassion. By embodying a vision that illuminates greater opportunity for all. By serving with anchored conviction. Using our collective gifts to offer this world what it needs most. Hope. Not simply hope as a desire, but hope as a way of being. Because hope has changed the way we see the world. 
hope drives us to change the way the world is. Because hope shapes our calling. Because hope inspires our dreams. Because hope empowers our talents. Because hope frees us to try. Because hope transforms what we believe, transforms how we act, transforms who we are. At Hope College, we know this life-altering grace is a gift we have all been given. And it is the greatest gift we can offer the world. Hope transforms. Hello, I'm Trigvi Johnson, and I serve as the Dean of the Chapel at Hope College. I'd like to thank you for your continued relationship with Hope. Thank you for being our people. People are what make this campus special, a people rooted in our shared faith in Jesus Christ. And in that spirit, I'd like to personally invite you to come join us for chapel every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 10.30 a.m. Come and join the next generation of Hope College students as we sing the old songs of the faith and some new ones. Come and enter in and experience the energy and vitality of what it is to be a Christian here at Hope College as God shapes us to be a people of hope now and for future generations. My name's Emma Dutmers and I'm a communications major and then I'm minoring in environmental studies. I play soccer. The first soccer game of my junior year, I tore my ACL. Our athletic trainer, Annie, was there for me right when it happened, and she was there for me literally every step of the way. That was definitely a huge growing opportunity for me, and it was really hard, but it really pushed me to be a leader with more of my voice because I couldn't lead by example on the field. It definitely made me take a step back and realize how much there is to be grateful for. As an invested community partner, LVZ is proud to share hope stories of transformational impact. Hey, back here with second half action, live from DeVos Fieldhouse with the MIAA semifinal matchup, Calvin playing Trine, followed here at 7.30 with Hope College hosting the Brits from Albion. Hey, let's talk a little bit, Paul, before we recap that first half, I mean, these teams have all played each other, Trine and Calvin played twice this year, yep. Trine the victor in both of those games, 60 to 45 on the 3rd of December, and then on the 11th of February, 59-54, they are leading in into this ball game 36 to 25 and this is a team you know they've they've really showcased a you know dominance early but Calvin fighting back and let's hope that Calvin can can get some momentum keep keep themselves in this ball game hope that trying doesn't take that opportunity to pull away yeah you really kind of like what you saw there at the end of the first uh, first half here from try or from Calvin excuse me um, you know really kind of stepping into their offense starting to move a little bit quicker uh, play with some pace um, still not as stifling on defense as some of the Knights faithful would want them to be um, especially to match uh, trines offensive power uh, but at the same time Calvin had a lot of momentum going into that half um, and then, unfortunately, they weren't able to, to do anything with it as the clock uh, wound down and uh, Trine ended up finishing the half with just a couple of free throws there. Um, you know, we've got Michaela Artis for Trine leading all scorers with 11, uh, followed closely behind by Sydney Cleary and Alyssa Argyle. Uh, Sydney Cleary from Calvin and Alyssa Argyle from Trine. Um, one of the things that I, that I talked about earlier, and we'll mention it again, is that Trine's guard play is just pretty fantastic, and they have at least three guards who can put up double figures each night, probably sometimes even into the high 20 range. Uh, so we'll be looking for one of their guards to kind of explode. Calvin's got to find an answer for that. I think you're right, Paul, and, you know, whether it's Argyle, whether it's Wagner, whether it's Artis, it's so quick off the dribble, and they do this offensively so well on the drive and kick. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you're a shooter and you're not one of their one-two people, 
on that drive, you're always expecting the dish. Always expecting the dish. Looks a little different than what Calvin's up to. Calvin looking for that entry pass. I like that transition to now they're trying to take Timmer and they're trying to take Dirksy, put them a little bit more near the free throw line, see if they can get a touch there and give them an opportunity to face up. Right. And if they can face up, then they can maybe beat them off the dribble. But right now, I mean, like you said, Trent's guard play, they're able to penetrate so much and, and able to penetrate and dish, and that's been a recipe for success. Hey, let's see what happens here in the second half. It's going to be a great second half here. Um, you know, as we saw, uh, we mentioned it a couple of times, the, the game at Calvin in Grand Rapids uh, a month ago or so, um, you know, Calvin really kind of clawing their way back into that game to make it super competitive, and I would expect nothing less from the Knights who have really nothing to lose at this point in time to give it their all here in the second half. Here's Thunder basketball. Artist, top of the key. Gets it over to Sloniker and around the perimeter here. There's Argyle. She thinks about it. Gets it down to Sloniker. Face up. Yep, up. Oh, she can't get it to go. And that's a turnover by Sloniker. Wonderful defense by Timmer. Sloniker, uh, number one, who also has a twin sister on the team. Uh, I, I didn't realize that until that's I good research, the Paul. Yeah, well, it's pretty, <laughs> I love e that. it's pretty easy to see. I, I'm, a, I'm a twin myself, so I kind of we kind of recognize each other yeah. out in the wild, right? Yeah. <laughs> You guys are on a different medium. That's right. <laughs> nice pass by Cleary. Down to Timmer. Timmer, can she? She can't, but she gets her own rebound. Can again. She's yeah, going to get the over and back over call. Back, yeah. Well, Gabby Timmer adding to her ever-expanding rebound total tonight um, by, by grabbing two boards there, uh, unable to put it back in, unfortunately, for the Knights. And even with a wonderful career, I know she wants to end tonight with a W and to Absolutely. continue to play into tomorrow. Sloniker trying to get the drive. Here's Tate. Yep, Hezzy up and under. Yeah, wow, why not? And one. Too strong, too tough. Didn't even have her shoulders straightened up. Still able to get that ball just off the glass, soft enough for the and one. Yeah, nice move by Katie Tate there, putting her at seven points for the evening, uh, shooting one at the line now. And to realize, I mean, her shooting a free throw left-handed lets me know, I mean, that's not her dominant hand no, to be able to hesitate and go not. up and that's under right. with the right. Here's Harris, she drives with the left. Trying to get the ball out, she stops. And here's Neely, all cross-court pass. Cleary thinks about it, she does. Yep, yeah, nothing nice but nylon. Nice by Cleary there. Wonderful. If she gets hot, that's gonna be big for Calvin. Lead down to 10. Here's Wagner. Passing around the perimeter is trying. Artist top of the key. Easy pass, here's Wagner, thinks about it. Yep, out to Tate for three. Off the mark, rebound brought down by Cleary. Big possession here for Calvin. They push the pace a little bit. Timmer trying to get her positioning. Cleary on the drive. She goes right into Sloniker, gets the foul that she wants. She yeah. gets those free throws. That's really smart play by Cleary. Yeah, she it, doesn't even have direction of the basket. No. She's able to just go right through her and That's say, right. I'm going to take the free throws. Really heads up move. Well, yeah, Matt, you really love, like, if you're a Knight fan, you really mm -hmm. kind of got to love the way that Calvin is coming out and pushing the pace yeah. thus far in this uh, third quarter here, really trying to get some dribble drives, moving the ball well. Um, yeah, shooter's touch there for Cleary, uh, kind of bouncing it in. But yeah, if you're a Knight fan, you really got to appreciate what Calvin's doing right now uh, with, with the pace of play. Lead down to eight. Like you said, I mean, they, they're expecting Trines just too good in the defensive half court set. So they're going to push it a lot. Here comes the Thunder, other way around. The weave offense. And they're gonna get oh. Neely on a foul. I'm not sure what. I'm not sure. I don't know if we can there. get a replay here. Yeah. From the deck to see what happened there, but I, I thought at first that the ref was gonna call a moving screen or something. And here's Wagner. Wagner at the top of the key. Gets it out. Tate. Tate thinks about it. Around the horn again. Here's Argyle on the drive. Yep. Tate on the drive with the right. Yeah, she gets it to go. Yeah. 
40 to 30, try and lead. Here's Cleary, pushing the pace. They want it in ISO. Wow, unbelievable steal there by Wagner. Yeah, nice hustle play by Wagner to really kind of uh, throw it back in as she was kind of careening out of bounds there. Argyle thinks about it, out to Artis. Artis quick off the dribble, up and under, no, too much. Great D by Cleary, she's pushing it. Mm. Mm. Oh, and Cleary gets pushed to the ground, hard there. The transition by Artis. <laughs> Artis just with one foul on the night. Clear it up and she looks fine. They need her to stay in this ball game and she's tough and does so. In the half court set. Let's see what Calvin wants to set up here. Or at the free throw on. Oh, Wonderful nice pass. Yeah. Too tall for you. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah, nice little one-two entry pass there. Um, you know, first entry pass at the top of the line there, and then that freed up Gabby Timmer down low to really kind of open up that space. Argyle thinks about it, gets clear up in the air. Clear, oh. gets away with a foul. Maybe she doesn't. No. Nope. She doesn't. She gets it on the reach. She tried to push, punch that ball out from behind. The right idea. Let's see what Tryon wants to do here in the half court. Calvin doing their best to kind of claw back in this game. Down by eight points right now. Trying with the ball. Looking on the dribble drive there. Nice block there. I think that was Rohrer. Wonderful block by Rohrer. Here's Cleary pushing in again. High screen. Good dish. Is that Timmer? Yeah. yeah. Why not? She's in double digits now, and it's a timeout by the Thunder. 40 to oh, 34 man. to the Thunder lead. Calvin with all the momentum here in DeVos. We're going to take a quick break. That'll be a full by trying. My name is Meg Morehouse. I'm a senior this year, and I'm studying physical education and health. I am on the women's basketball team. We won the national championship when I was a junior. It was unbelievable. The education department at Hope allowed me to realize my passion about teaching. Anytime I get to go into a classroom and work with students, I just get really excited. My goal when I graduate would be to be a middle school physical education and health teacher. Hope does an amazing job of preparing their students for what is to come in the future. As an invested community partner, LVZ is proud to help share Hope's stories of transformational impact. My name is Megan Bigelow, and during my time there, I was on the Hope Women's Soccer Team. I decided to choose Hope because of the opportunity to be involved in multiple things. I didn't want to go somewhere where I was just a number in the field. I was able to double major, experience both a business academic load as well as economics. I love the opportunity to really get to know my professors. Hope exceeded my expectations. I'm Nate Bauman. As an invested community partner, we're proud to help share Hope's stories of transformational impact. Hey, back here from the Boss Fieldhouse, 40 to 34. Calvin gaining momentum. Yeah. MIAA semifinals. Could it be any better? Paul, we're in for the long haul. Yes, we are. I'll tell you what, if you're if you're a Hope College basketball fan and you're planning on coming out for the Hope versus Albion game, I would encourage you to get here a little bit early so you can see the finish to this game of what's shaping up to be kind of a barn burner here in terms of uh, two top 25 teams really going at it, putting it all on the line. Mistake by trying there, Sydney Wagner throwing the ball out of bounds. Calvin Faithful getting loud now here in DeVos Fieldhouse. Looked like Wagner was trying to communicate to Sander to see if she knew where she was going to be on the slip. Couldn't hit it. Here comes Calvin the other way. Harris on the drive. Gets the position she wants. Why not? Lead brought down to four. Great shot. Leah Harris. 5.54 to play in the third. Calvin crawling back. Entry pass to Artis. Artis up and under. Yep. Oh, yeah. She's Michaela been the best player Artis. on the court That's tonight. Absolutely right. Yeah. She's got 13. New guard in here for Calvin. That's Claire Cassidy, the sophomore from Grand Rapids Christian. Out to Harris. A whole lot of Harris on the dribble drive lately. She gets position. Yep. Timmer for three. Off the mark. And that's Roar. Was well over the back of Alyssa Argyle. Yep. She get called for the foul. 
Yeah, you can really start to kind of feel the momentum build and shift here a little bit. Calvin starting to play with, with a little bit more intensity, a little bit more purpose on the offensive end here. Sydney Cleary checking back into the game as well as uh, number 13 for the Knights, Alyssa Carner. Really, the game plan from Coach Christian changed a lot here where yeah. he's, he's doing a lot of drive heavy from Harris to try and get trying out of their sets to see if he can get that ball out. They're getting a few more open threes. Good D by Harris. Yeah, almost it out a turnover Wagner. there for the, for the Thunder. But Calvin kind of stepping up the defensive pressure here a little bit more now, too, playing a little bit more out high on the perimeter, which they weren't really doing in the first half. Absolutely, Paul. Way better on ball here in the second half. Argyle around the perimeter. Sloniker. Timmer says, I'll give up that three. And here's Wagner. Thinks about it. Off the mark. And yeah. that's going to be a foul on Hines as she tried to get that rebound over Cleary. Really smart box out there by Sydney Cleary. You really kind of like what you see. Media timeout here. Uh, we'll be right back after this break. The River Place in downtown Holland redefines active senior living. A no-step floor plan is designed around your needs so you can leave the worries of home ownership behind and enjoy a vibrant lifestyle right outside your door. Make the River Place your home. Visit resthaven.org slash riverplace to reserve yours today. here, live from DeVos Fieldhouse. Kelvin, turning up the Kelvin. Temperature that is <laughs> here in DeVos, down six, yeah. under five to play in the third. They are just another defense possession. See if they're a stop. Score, stop, score. Away from being within this ball game here. Here's Cleary, bringing across the timeline. On ball pressure by Artis. Try and looks get Tate back in the ball game. Here's Harris. Yeah, oh, why nice not? Nice shot there by Harris. She's confident. She yeah. knows what she's doing. She Calvin. is helping these Knights get back in this ball game. That's right. Calvin down by four now, 42 to 38, trying with the lead here. Here's Artis. Top of the key. She gets out Slonker. Yep, for three. Off the mark to the right. Rebound brought down by Cleary. In control, confident, wonderful dish, and here's Roar. Gets position she wants. Kick is out to clear to see what they can set up. Gets down to Timmer. Timmer is doubled. Can't yeah. get it to go. Ill-advised shot from Gabby Timmer there on that double team. She didn't really have anywhere to go, uh, but just needed to put it up. Unfortunately, didn't fall down for the Knights here. Sloniker trying to drive on Timmer. She knows a block party is expected down there. Nice hands by Roar with the steal. And we have a jump ball. Possession arrow favoring the Knights. Huge so turnover Calvin, for yeah, Calvin. Calvin forcing another turnover here. Um, and now Sophie Sloniker in the game. Uh, number 10 and number 14, the Sloniker twins out on the floor. I can't tell the difference, but you have that twin telepathy, so <laughs> you're exactly going to have to right. help me tell which one's which. Here's Cleary, across the timeline. Out to Roar. Roar fell on the ground. Yeah. It's going to be a turnover on Calvin. Ball back to the Thunder here. There's Artis setting it up. Out to Hines. Hines here to Tate. Over to Sloniker. Sloniker to Sloniker to Artis. Yep, down. Easy two. Yeah. Up and nice through. Little, nice little play down there. Wonderful uh, pass to the senior, Sophie Sloniker. Clear going the other way. Six points is the try and lead. That's Katie Sloniker on the front for Timmer as they can't get that ball down there. Trying to get it on the drive. 
Here's Harris. Thinks about it, puts the ball on the floor. Oh, leaves it short. Leah Harris with a nice dribble drive there. Possession in the hands of Trine. Here come the Thunder. Around the horn is Trine. Here's at the top of the key. Katie Sloniker over to Artis. Calvin forcibly saying you can take that three if you want it, force them to get up and under. Sloniker once again, too much defense by Timmer. Here comes Calvin with an opportunity. Cross court pass by Harris to Cleary. Yeah! Nice shot. He gets by it to go. Calvin is right in this game, down by three. You can hear the Calvin faithful behind us. Uh, this game is really shaping up to be something special here. A short half hour drive for Calvin fans as they come down to Holland and they're rocking the house here. 44 41. Let's see how Trine answers. Hines is oh, blocked nice by Cleary. By Cleary. Cleary with the run out now, down in the paint, up and Ooh. oh. Can't get it to go. Tried to get an and one there, did Cleary. Um, very similar to that uh, other play that we had in the first half here where Cleary, Cleary had that breakaway. Uh, you see if we get a chance on the replay here, Timmer just sees Cleary, beats her man, yeah. beats her woman out in transition. Timmer does the Kevin Love outlet pass. That's right. Gets it out to her down. Yeah. And now she's at the free throw line. See if she can make this one possession. She does. Only down two points now. As we see the the steal here for the block by Cleary and then Timmer with the Kevin Love outlet pass. I love that look. Yeah. Cleary so smooth from the free throw line too. Uh, all game. I don't think she's missed a free throw yet. So. And it's been all Calvin in the third. Yeah. If this were a heavyweight knockout, first round trying, second round Calvin, third round, we'll see. Rebound. Brought down by Neely. Here they are again, pushing that pace. Timmer gets the position she wants, picks up her feet. But they're going to get a foul on the floor. Oh, wow. Yeah. Before she picked up her feet, that foul is going to be on Katie Sloniker. Sloniker doing everything she can to keep her out of the post. She's done a terrific job tonight. Are they calling, did they call that a shooting foul? It looks like, it looks like the, the, the call on the floor was a shooting foul there. Wow. Timmer ties this ball game. 117 to play here in the third. Yeah, it, I thought that was on the floor yeah, as she was picking like up her feet. First, yeah. But it is a, um, it is a, a, a bonus shot. Gabby Timmer giving Calvin the lead for the first time in this game, 45 to 44, up against the Thunder now. Calvin faithful here in DeVos Fieldhouse getting loud. Trying, Wagner, she oh, answers yeah. with the one she wants. Too tough. Yeah, Sydney Wagner, a great guard. Uh, really can dribble drive, really can shoot it from anywhere on the floor. Timmer, Gabby too Timmer hard too off the strong, cross. yeah. Here comes Trine. Wagner, too quick, yep, for two, why not? Mm. She can and she will lead this Trine Thunder team. 48-45 is their lead. Here's Cleary, she leads all scores with 17. Terrific third quarter by Cleary. Here she is, on the drive, beats him, too strong, oh, yeah! Wow. Determined. And the heavyweight bout goes back and forth, these two teams. Nobody will go down quietly. No, they will not. You know, and this is the time, the past two possessions, Sydney Wagner has had it down the floor and has put the team on her back and scored the last two buckets for trying. Let's see if she does it again here. Last shot by Wagner. Defensive pressure there from Calvin uh, forced Sidney Wagner into a double dribble now with 0.7 seconds left, which I think is just about enough to catch and shoot.
Oh. And that will do it for the third quarter. Calvin does win the third round of this bout. 48-47 is the trying lead. Heading into the fourth quarter action, we'll be right back here. Whether you're building your dream home, buying a fixer upper, or downsizing, the process can feel overwhelming. Let the local team at Lighthouse Title help the closing process be one less worry. Just ask your real estate professional or lender to close at Lighthouse Title. To learn more about how we are involved in our 35 communities or to ask us any questions about the process, visit us online at lighthousetitle.net. Boss Field House, MIAA semi-final game, 48-47 try and lead. Ten minutes for the rest of your life right now. You That's better stay right. with us. Yeah. And then stay for that 7:30 <laughs> game. Hope first Albion as the Dutch take on the Brits for the other half of the bracket to see who's gonna play in the MIAA championship game. We've got 288 folks watching live now, Mr. Wainer, so. And another 300,000 live. That's I'm right. just kidding. <laughs> Here's Sander. Oh, nice For little two, and she does. No, not 300,000 here, but sure does feel like it. With the crowd of these Knights fans behind us in their short drive from Grand Rapids, here's Neely. Oh, nice down. find. Oh, my goodness. Great block by Wagner. It's out there to Harris. Calvin's trying to set it up again. Screen by Timmer, but off the front iron is Harris. Here comes Wagner, all the way to the bucket. She thought about it, and stolen nice by Calvin. Defense. Harris pushing the pace. Kicks out, Cleary. She oh, does! Wow. Another one! Sydney Cleary with an offensive explosion here in the second half for Calvin University. Uh, you really gotta love that if you're a Calvin Knight fan. 22 points for Cleary. And here comes Tate. Tate driving oh. off balance. They're going to get Dirksy on the foul. Cleary, what a huge shot to tie this ball game at 50. Neither team will go to sleep. Yeah, Sidney Cleary leading all scorers with 23 points right now. Number 11, Tate at the free throw line, sinking the first one. Shooting her second now. Up and in. Trying now back with the two point lead. Here uh, comes Calvin. Calvin down two. Cleary thought about it. She's got the quick trigger. She drives out to Harris. Harris, yep. Oh, get in it to and go. out for Leah Harris. What Almost a nice-looking shot, though, right? Now Artis' is opportunity to set up some offense. Artis drives. Yep. Oh, wow. Nice Beautiful steal. by Neely as she steals the basketball, and she's out going the other way. Trying to set up. Timmer calls for that high screen and roll. Trying to decide if she'll face up on Sander. Bad pass by Timmer in the post. It's a turnover. Here comes Trine, going the other way. Wagner has the space she wants for that ISO. She's so good at it. And to Artis. Artis drives. She's got space to work with. Goes out to Tate. Tate, almost blocked oh. by Timmer, but she gets the contact in the air. Timmer gets called for the foul. Look at it on the body. That's Timmer's third. Tate at the free throw line now, shooting two more. Uh, last time down the court uh, when she shot two free throws, they both went in. First one goes in for Tate now, trying with a three-point lead, 53 to 50. Another one by Tate. 
trying. Four points ahead now. Here comes Cleary with the hot hand. She's got 22. Around the perimeter. Cleary on the drive. Yep, down to Timmer. That's her sweet spot. Why not yeah, again? Yeah, Gabby Timmer. She with loves a strong it. Strong finish. When you get, when you're that good and you get the ball that deep near the bucket, it's always going to be a two. Around the perimeter, here's the Thunder. Sanders at the top of the key, over to Artis. Sanders puts the ball on the floor. Good spacing. Oh, but oh, Timmer no. can't get the rebound. It will remain Thunder basketball. Yeah, I don't think Timmer kind of knew that that ball was going to bounce that particular way and then unfortunately just off her fingertips. Just doing a lot of weaving and cutting. Wagner almost bounced off the front iron. Calvin gets the rebound. Cleary pushes the pace again. She knows what she wants to do. Out, nice pass by Rohr. And they're going to get Harris on the travel. She just takes a couple too many steps there. Dirksy coming back in to check in with under seven to play here. Two point lead by Trine. Oh geez. Wow. What an unlucky, one hundred on, what's that a series of unfortunate events there? Uh, Lemony Snicket. That's right, Lemony Snicket. Ball bounces off the bottom of the backboard. Hits Sidney Cleary, I think in the face. Well, Jim uh, Carey played Lemony Snicket in that right. series. I know what you're yeah. talking about. Yeah, ball <laughs> went off the backboard and then it went off Cleary's face. That's why it's trying basketball here. Yeah, movie kind of underrated. I like yeah. that movie. I think it's 2003. Yeah, yeah. How many Snickers? I don't dare show it to my daughter. I think it's not a little yet. scary for her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, you probably got to be 11 or 12. I think it was too early for oh, me. Nice defensive play by Calvin there. Leah Harris with the strip, Rohrer with the ball, and then gets fouled. We'll leave that conversation for after the broadcast. That's right. <laughs> Nobody wants to hear us talk Jim Carrey movies. No way. Unless it's Ace Ventura. <laughs> Here comes Calvin. Down two. Wonderful defensive possession there by the Knights. So much high screen for Harris in the second half as that's been a key to their success coming back in this ball game. Cleary gets position. Ooh, wonderful kick. Neely thought about it. Couldn't get it up. Here's Harris. Dish down to Dirksy. Dirksy gets her own rebound. Yeah. I think they got Tate on the foul. Yeah. Tate, wonderful. She catches her entry pass just with her left hand and is able to bring it down to have an opportunity to go up with it. Yeah, Gabby Timmer checking back into the ball game now. And Katie Sloniker checking back in for trying as well. Oh, Gabby Timmer with the shooter's roll there. Nice little six foot jump shot. Falling in, we have a tie ball game here, 54 to 54 with Trine bringing it up the court, looking to set their offense. Wagner on the drive. To Argyle, thinks about it, rebound brought down by Timmer. Tie ball game, momentum still feels like it's in favor of the Knights yeah. here in DeVos. Yep. Timmer almost gets called for three seconds. They're going to get Wagner on the push. <clears throat> Wagner not in foul trouble. But Hines is going to come in the ball game for Argyle as she takes a break. Yeah. Worth mentioning really quick while we have a little break in the action, Sydney Wagner named MIAA most valuable player this year uh, from trying, while Meg Morehouse from... Hope was the defensive player of the year. Leah Harris with the shot now. Calvin with the two-point lead. 
Lots of action here in this ball game. And there's the timeout by Trine. Yeah. An explosion from Knights fans. We're going to take a break. We'll be right back here. My name is Evan Thomas. I'm a rising senior at Hope College. I'm a biology major and a chemistry minor on the pre-med track. And I play basketball here. Hope's really defined my goals and defined the path I want to set for myself. Coach Mitchell has been a big catalyst in my growth here at Hope, as well as many professors, specifically my lab professor, Dr. Calvo. I hope to use what I've learned here at Hope to continue my research in medical school. Through medicine, I hope I can erase healthcare disparities. I'm Ryan Vanderswart. As an invested community partner, LBZ is proud to help share Hope College's stories of transformational impact. There is a school whose namesake is not a founder, not a historical figure, not a state, city, or physical landmark. It is named after an ideal, a virtue, a way of life. Its name is Hope. Welcome back to DeVos Fieldhouse here. As we mentioned before the break, all MIAA teams being announced this morning. Uh, Sydney Wagner from Trine being named MIAA MVP. Meg Morehouse from Hope, who we'll see here in a little bit, me being named Defensive Player of the Year. And of course, an all MIAA first team uh, honors for Michaela Artis from Trine, Claire Bagley from Hope, Denia Beavers from Albion, Savannah Feenstra from Hope, Gabby Timmer from Calvin, and Sydney Wagner from Trine. Uh, just a star-studded cast there, Mr. Wayner. And we're back, Paul. Here's Tate, driving and dishing to Artis, getting some picks. She gets a good look off the front iron, rebound by who else? Gabby Timmer. Gabby Timmer. All-time Calvin University rebounding champion, uh, adding to her total tonight with a, what feels like she got like 12 or 13 boards already. <laughs> so, Oh, a nice find. Leah Harris, Harris with the tough strong. shot. Strong. Can't get it to go. And the rebound is brought down by Wagner. Going the other way. Down two. Little hesitation in that step. There's Hines trying to get a good look. She can't get the dish. Wagner. Whoa. Oh, oh, wow. Wonderful shot by Sydney Wagner. Yeah. Just, uh, it was almost like she said, oh, here's the ball. Yep. I'm going to pick it up and shoot it. When you're as talented as she is, those will go down. Clear driving sets up for the one she likes. Yep, Timmer in one-on-one. -on -one. She gets doubled there. Trying one on the travel call. Yeah. Calvin taking a timeout here. Uh, we'll be right back after this quick, uh, quick break. Back live, DeVos Fieldhouse. Matt Wayner alongside Paul Willard. 341 to play here. And you will stay for the 7.30 semifinal game. Now pass in to Timmer. Exchanges hands of Calvin Knights. Oh, nice driving strip there. The turnover, and here comes Argyle going the other way. She finds Artis. Yep, Argyle. Short. Calvin basketball. Yeah, good look from Argyle there. Uh, kind of a, a pretty high percentage shot for her. Uh, just really kind of leaving it short. I think she was a little bit too far out, uh, maybe. But uh, Calvin happy to let that ball kind of bounce out of bounds and get possession back. Around the horn is Calvin. Trying to get a little bit more credit. They've done great on-ball pressure around the perimeter all game. And this Calvin kind of transition to have an offense a little bit more on the screen roll as we look at this replay. Cleary tries to get it down. As Timmer is fouled on the way up. Here's Timmer at the free throw line with an opportunity to take the lead in this basketball game. Yeah, Timmer gets the first. Timmer finds her way to 17. That's her sweet spot. She's 17.8 a game. She crosses that mark up to 18 now. 
Calvin back with the lead now by one point with just over three minutes to go in this game, 58 to 57. It's even across the board. Calvin shooting 43 from the field, trying 45%. Wow, you can't get much closer than that. Tate gets room to work, but she picks up her dribble. Artis, yeah? She yeah, does. She's going to hit that all day, especially when she's wide open like that. 60 to 58 is the try and lead. Cleary picks up her dribble, top of the key, dishes it over to Harris. Harris to Neely. Neely back to Harris. Harris drives over to Timmer. Cleary for three. Nope. Oh. And the great box out by Wagner puts yep. Dirksy in a position where she has to go over the back. It's trying basketball. A trying bucket here is brutal for Calvin. With just 2.21 to play, you're starting to count the possessions. Yeah, you are. In yeah. a game that's been back and forth over the last 10 minutes. And this is very eerily reminiscent, if you're a Calvin Knight fan, of what happened in the, in the game in Grand Rapids a month ago. Uh, you know, Calvin really kind of clawing their way back in, but then trying doing just enough down the stretch to pull away. It's Wagner. Here's Tate on the drive. Tate over Artis for three. Off the mark. Rebound is brought down by Harris. Cleary setting up her offense. Cleary 22. Timmer 18. Harris with eight. Great pass by Timmer. And Rohr can't get it to go. Finds in the hands of Timmer. Here's Cleary for two. She can't. Oh, no. The rebound safely in the hands of Sloniker. Nice take there by Cleary, though. Calvin need to put the pressure on defensively here to get a stop. Trying just happy to kind of kill some clock here, dribble the ball out. A couple of nice looks by Calvin on the other end. A trying basket would be brutal for them. Here's Tate. She gets it to Argyle. They're taking their time, trying to set up something they like. Artis. Wow. With and the one. and one. Nobody else but Michaela Artis. Yeah. She's been great today. She's got 18 tonight. She had been quiet for the third. Yeah. Quiet for the fourth. When the ball's in her hands, you can trust her. Yeah, absolutely. Michaela Artis with a chance for the and one now. She does. Up five now. One minute, eight seconds to play. You need a bucket this possession. If you can get it to Timmer, you want to. Trying, doing a great job fronting. Yeah. And Calvin Neely's, taking... yeah, Neely's bailed out there. She doesn't really get squared up for a good look, but she's fouled on her way up. Calvin taking a little bit too much time to set up their offense there. Uh, really letting the shot clock dwindle down. Uh, surprising to see Sidney Cleary come off the floor now. Um, maybe an offense-defense kind of substitution there for, for Calvin. I think at this point, yeah, they're counting possessions. And they're getting Emma Witte, the sophomore from Grand Rapids Christian, back in the ball game defensively here. See if they can get the ball back. Trying to make this a one possession game. She does. Neely at the free throw line. 63 to 60. It's a timeout. It's a 30 second timeout. We're going to stay right here. Yeah. And we're just going to break down a little bit of what's been happening. Man, Paul, 63 to 60, 48 well, seconds to play. For, for the crowd that has turned out tonight, you can't ask for a better basketball game. I'll That's tell you right. what. I mean, you know. Uh, Calvin missing their opportunities uh, to really kind of put trying away when they had their when they had their chance. As you see a couple yeah. good looks here on the screen, you can see Calvin, the change they made offensively so Absolutely. good by Harris, by Timmer and Paul, like you've been saying. I mean, we've got a team that's 21 and 5 in Calvin, a team that's 20 and 5 in Trine. You've got Hope College at 23 and 2. Yeah. All three teams deservedly should have an opportunity to get into the NCAA tournament to represent the MIAA, and one or two of them will do so. Yeah. This really speaks to how strong the MIAA conference is as a whole. 
goal as well. So, uh, you know, we'll see what Trine does here out of their uh, out of their timeout for this offensive set. Uh, Trine happy to kill some clock here uh, to whittle down the whittle down the minutes and the seconds. Wow. It, it works, it all but works out. Oh, wow. So Calvin, <laughs> Coach Christner brings in Witty to help with that trap. Trap in the corner on Wagner. She throws the ball away and they almost get the turnover that they want. Cleary comes back in the ball game. They look for the trap again. Yeah, Roar with the foul now. So they send him to the free throw line to try and force Katie Tate to have to hit these two free throws to make this a two possession game. Tate misses the first. Mm. Still lots of time left in this game. I know the, the clock only says 32 seconds, so that's a lot of time. Tate. Yeah, Tate gets hits it to him. go. Timeout, Calvin here. Uh, We're going to take a quick break. Yep. They're going to take a full. We'll be right back here from the Voss Fieldhouse. The River Place in downtown Holland redefines active senior living. A no step floor plan is designed around your needs so you can leave the worries of home ownership behind and enjoy a vibrant lifestyle right outside your door. The River Place, your home. Visit resthaven.org slash riverplace to reserve yours today. My name is Megan Bigelow, and during my time there, I was on the Hope Women's Soccer Team. I decided to choose Hope because of the opportunity to be involved in multiple things. I didn't want to go somewhere where I was just a number in the field. I was able to double major, experience both the business academic load as well as economics. I love the opportunity to really get to know my professors. Hope exceeded my expectations. I'm Nate Bauman. As an invested community partner, we're proud to help share Hope's stories of transformational impact. Back here, the Voss Field House. We're a couple possessions away from seeing who's going to make it to the MIAA championship game. You'll want to stay here for our 7.30 broadcast. Hope College taking on the Albion Britons. Brits, I'm sorry, but let's see who's going to represent here from Calvin and Trine. Calvin has the ball over to Neely, and there's going to be a quick foul on Sloniker. Sloniker handsy with Timmer. She's been getting pushed around a lot, but she's done really well today as she finds her way at 18 points. Finds herself with an opportunity at the free throw line. The fifth year senior, an illustrious career at Calvin from South Christian High School. Yeah, and that's uh, Katie Sloniker fouling out of the game now. Simmer, nothing but net. Gabby Timmer trying to make this a two-point game here with her second free throw. It's off the mark. Rebound by Roar. Out to Harris. Here's a Calvin possession. Timeout by Calvin. They're going to talk it over. One possession game here in DeVos Fieldhouse. We'll take a break. Be right back. My name is Meg Morehouse. I'm a senior this year, and I'm studying physical education and health. I am on the women's basketball team. We won the national championship when I was a junior. It was unbelievable. The education department at Hope allowed me to realize my passion about teaching. Anytime I get to go into a classroom and work with students, I just get really excited. My goal when I graduate would be to be a middle school physical education and health teacher. Hope does an amazing job of preparing their students for what is to come in the future. As an invested community partner, LVZ is proud to help share Hope's stories of transformational impact. I'm out, 64-61, Trine Thunder leads Calvin University. We've got 24 seconds to play, Calvin ball. Let's see what Calvin draws up. Do they feel like it has to be a three? Or will they take the two and foul? Let's see what Calvin does. Into Neely, draws it up, here's Cleary. Cleary on the ground. They do not have a timeout. 
so she cannot call one, and it's jump ball. Will remain with Calvin. 15 and a half to play. Wow, nice defense there by trying, really kind of snuffing out all of what Calvin was trying to do offensively. Roar the inbounds passer into Neely. Neely for three, she's blocked by Argyle. The Ball's block by Argyle wow. remains Calvin possession. Another opportunity here. Well, now, now I think you got to have a three. The defense by Trine, but unbelievable. Four seconds left on the shot clock here for Calvin. Uh, four seconds and, and the rest of their and the rest of their season. Here's Harris. One opportunity. Three, two. She can't. No, it's a shot clock violation. Didn't realize with the shot clock, maybe. Nonetheless, they had a couple opportunities. Trine's going to take a timeout to kind of talk about what their plan is here with six seconds play. They just got to get the ball in, yeah. get over their timeline. We'll take a break. Be right back. Here, Voss Field House, 64-61. We got six to play. The Knights down by three. Let's see what Try wants to do. I mean, Calvin will come out in that full court pressure and yeah, try and sure. find out. This has been an excellent ball game. Both these teams deservedly have an opportunity. And we will be stay after this game to see some some of the ceremony here for from the MIAA. We'll take yeah. you two from the house, Mike and Darren Dysermars. Well, nonetheless, let's see what happens here in these last six seconds in this semifinal matchup. Ball is in to Michaela Artis. Quick foul by Neely. So Artis at the free throw line now. She's just got to hit one to feel safe. Yeah. Going to get their defensive sub, Witty, out. Get Cleary back in, their three-point shooter. Cleary leads all scores with 22. Timmer's got 19. Kayla Artis leads trying with 19 points. Wonderful first half. And a great job in the second half. She all but ices this ball game with that free throw. Yeah, absolutely. Michaela Artis with the chance to really kind of put it away right now for the Trine Thunder. She's been an MVP for them in this ball game. Wonderful game by Michaela Artis. One last opportunity here for Trine. Cleary can't get it to go, and Trine Thunder will face off in the championship game tomorrow night, 7.30, here from DeVos Fieldhouse. Yeah. What a terrific basketball game. Calvin all but had an opportunity there in the end. A wonderful season from the Knights. They will likely not have a bid in the, MI, or in the NCAA tournament, but a terrific season. And a wonderful job. And if you're a Knights fan, there's so much to be proud of, especially yeah. from fifth-year senior Gabby Timmer with an unbelievable career to end here tonight. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and I think that one of the things that you can be proud about if you're a Knights fan is the way that they fought back into this game and uh, really kind of came alive uh, in the second half here, really made uh, really made try and work for it in the third quarter. And uh, you really can't ask for anything better than that. A terrific comeback there by Calvin as they were so close and we will be uh we're, we're gonna stay here and so we're gonna send it over to the house mics to go over this miaa presentation yeah and then you'll have to tune into the youtube broadcast to hear us go over for the uh, 730 ball game the brits coming here to take on hope college yep for the other semifinal. so that's all for us paul willard alongside matt wainer here at today's game. First, let's introduce the all MIAA second team recipients that are present here today. From, From Calvin, Calvin University, Sydney Cleary. Cleary. From Calvin University, Leah Harris. From Hope College, Ella McKinney.
from Albion College, Lolo Reed. And from Albion College, Elena Welker. Ladies and gentlemen, you're all MIAA second team recipients. And now, ladies and gentlemen, here is our all MIAA first team recipients. First, from Trine University, Michaela Artis. From Hope College, Claire Bagley. From Albion College, Denia Beavers. From Hope College, Savannah Feenstra. From Calvin University, Gabby Timmer. And from Trine University, Sydney Wagner. Ladies and gentlemen, you're all MIAA first team recipients. And now, ladies and gentlemen, for our final two honors. The MIAA's Women's Defensive Basketball Player of the Year from Hope College, Meg Morehouse. And the MIAA Women's Basketball Most Valuable Player from Trine University, Sydney Wagner. Ladies and gentlemen, how about a round of applause for all of these incredible student athletes for their all MIAA performance during their regular season. Congratulations. There are over 5,000 colleges and universities in the United States alone. And nearly every single one of them is named after a location or a historical figure. But along the shores of Lake Michigan, there is a school whose namesake is not a founder, not a historical figure, not a state, city, or physical landmark. It is named after an ideal, a virtue, a way of life. Its name is hope. It's so easy to get lost in what this world lacks, to become discouraged by its needs, gaps, and flaws. Can we see beyond the uncertainty and brokenness? At Hope College, we do. Not by ignoring the world as it is, but by learning and living with the belief that this is not the world as it should be. By driving to understand, to unlock clarity, to amplify truth, by leading with inspired compassion, by embodying a vision that illuminates greater opportunity for all, by serving with anchored conviction, using our collective gifts to offer this world what it needs most, hope. Not simply hope as a desire, but hope as a way of being. Because hope has changed the way we see the world, Hope drives us to change the way the world is. Because hope shapes our calling. Because hope inspires our dreams. Because hope empowers our talents. Because hope frees us to try. Because hope transforms what we believe, transforms how we act, transforms who we are. At Hope College, we know this life-altering grace is a gift we have all been given, and it is the greatest gift we can offer the world. Hope transforms.